Refurbishing an Old Stuart Hand Pump, Part 22. This hand pump is going to be used to pump the water into the 501 boiler that will be supplying steam to the Stuart Score engine. I need to check it out and refurbish it. Stuart hand pumps are a bit of a tradition. I don't personally like them very much because they are too big and clumsy and the pump ram is too small. The pump ram could have been a good bit bigger than this if you look at the design. But that's the way it is and I have to live with it. I need to test this pump to see if it works. It's making all the right noises dry when I move the lever. The casing is more or less the same colour as the score, which is a good thing. This colour, by the way, is known as Stuart Green. I wonder why. Before I go any further and do any dismantling of the pump, I need to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do, pump water under pressure into a boiler. I'm not going to use a boiler, I'm going to use a food container. Here it is. I place a pump in the food container and move the handle and almost immediately water comes out of the top part, which is the feed to the boiler. The red cross means caution and this is a serious caution. This pump is capable of pumping extremely high pressures, so you don't want to do what I'm doing here. Don't put your finger tightly over the end. The worst case scenario is you could pump some water through your skin into your finger, which is not what you want to do. The good news is the mechanical aspect of this pump is fine. Now I need to look at the union nuts which are very large and the design for quarter inch pipe. I can't use quarter inch pipe in this installation so I'm using union adapters. This one converts the coned union from quarter of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch which is the pipe diameter that I require to use. The pump is quite rusty and very dirty and it all needs cleaning so it has to come apart. But first of all I'm making sure that the union nuts fit and they do. 26 threads per inch, 3 eighths of an inch diameter. The problem with model parts when they're old, they go rusty and you need to clean them. But you can't do that without dismantling them. So if you're thinking about buying an old model steam engine Please be aware, you can't just clean it in situ. You would have to dismantle quite a lot of the parts to clean them individually and then reassemble, which takes a good deal of time and effort. While on the subject of effort, these split pins are in 1 16th of an inch diameter holes and they're very tight indeed. Getting the split pins out of the holes took a lot longer than I'm showing here. Before I reassemble this part of the pump, I'm definitely going to drill the holes slightly larger. There is no benefit whatsoever in having the split pins a really tight fit in the holes. Eventually, I was able to remove the handle. There's quite a lot of cleaning to do. The gland nut needs cleaning, the brass top cap needs cleaning, as does the piston. And that's what I'm going to do first. I'm using a rotary abrasive wheel. These are not too severe, they remove all the dirt, grime and rust without damaging or scoring the metal parts. This took a while but eventually I got there and the part is completely clean. In the end I went all over the part, a heavy duty clean on the dirty parts and a very light clean along the length of the piston. These rotary abrasive wheels are really useful, they don't last long, they wear out very quickly but they are useful. I think I need to buy some more. I've found that the secret of giving them a longer life is to run them at a slower speed. Here I'm cleaning up the gland nut. The graphited yarn on the ram was in very good condition, so I just rewound it around the ram and refitted the entire assembly into the main casting. It's really important that the graphited yarn is not clamped too tightly. The gland nut needs to be just tight enough to stop any water leaks. The handle is very rusty. I started off by using a needle file but that was no good. I needed a bit more muscle so I'm using the one inch belt sander and yes I know my hands in the way but it's very difficult to film. Rubbing this part very lightly on the one inch belt sander's belt removed the majority of the rust. I tried to get rid of the rest by using the rotary abrasive wheel, but it wasn't coarse enough. I decided to use some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper wet on the bench. 
that removed most of the rust and then I cleaned it up very lightly on the rotary scourer and it looks okay. This part was surprisingly difficult, this is a very hard piece of steel. What I'm doing is holding the part in a pair of pliers because it's getting very hot and I'm enlarging the diameter of the hole to one imperial drill size above one sixteenth of an inch. Really I should have used my drilling machine for this but sometimes I like to experiment with different methods. And in the end this method was successful and now the split pins fit in the holes without binding. The final part of the job was to remove the top cap clean that up and refit it. Look carefully at this image and you will see the ball valve sat in the top of the pump. The ball valve really includes the pump itself but you can see the ball in the top. Here once again using the rotary scourer I'm cleaning up the top cap. Quite an easy job, it doesn't get particularly hot. To clean the top of this part I ran the rotary scourer to higher speed and applied less pressure. In no time at all it was shiny enough for the job, I didn't want it to be a gleaming polished item because these are not new engines and I want to obtain a sympathetic appearance of all the parts on the baseboards. Purposely using a large Barco spanner I re-tightened the top cap, I needed to put quite a bit of pressure on this to make sure it's sealed. The final job was to refit the split pins. Why is there a red cross warning? Well, I'm using a Stanley knife to open up the end of the split pins and you have to be very careful with these because they are extremely sharp. Once I initially opened the ends of the split pins, I opened them fully, or at least as far as I needed to, by using a screwdriver. Here I'm repeating the process for the upper split pin. First the Stanley knife and then the screwdriver. And this should be fine, they're going nowhere. Here's a before and after shot, this of course is the before and now it looks like this. Not perfect but about as good as the rest of the Stuart score, they match very well indeed. As you can see in this clip the pump also looks good the other way around. And that's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.